we see here Jesus' first recorded miracle. And uh, I love what it says in, in, uh, in this particular chapter about this, where he turns the water into wine. It says, on the third day there was a wedding in Canaan, Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding, and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. You know, I thought about that. It sounds like a typical mother going to their son. Listen, there's a situation going on. Um, can you take care of this? You know, can you take this out to my car? Can you move this? Can you do that? Can you, you know, it doesn't sound like a mother. And I love Jesus' reply because this sounds like a son. He says, her woman, what does your concern have to do with me? What, you know, what, why, why are you coming to me with this? You know, and he goes on to say that my, my hour has not yet come. My time's not now yet. And you're, and you're bugging me, you know. I don't know about you, but well, my mother's here. I've got to watch out. But anyway, <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, mothers can kind of kind of bug you a little bit. And you're like, you know, why, why are you bothering me with this stuff? You know, but nonetheless, Jesus began to give them instructions and it talks about the size of the pots and so on and so forth. But here, here's the deal. Before any instructions were given, his mother said to the servants, he said, she said, whatever he says, you do it. That's important. See, in order to receive like these testimonies that we've heard, there's something that we've got to do on our end. We've got to listen to what Jesus is going to say. He's trying to tell you something. By the Holy Spirit that's in our lives, because that Holy Spirit is is not just a, a a fun thing for us. You know what I mean? It's not just this thing where we begin to speak in other tongues. But that's great. That's part of it. But the Holy Spirit, being the third person of the Godhead, is something, some person in us, inside of us, telling us what we need to do, where we need to go, how we need to do it, when we should do it, when we shouldn't do it. And basically, Mary is saying, you know, do whatever this son of mine says to do. And then Jesus gives the instruction. He says, fill the uh, water pots with water. Well, that would be a highly unlikely thing to do if you want wine. You see what I'm saying? It would not make much sense. To fill water pots with water when you need wine to put in these things. But I'm going to tell you what. We serve an extraordinary God that wants to do extraordinary things. And he does things extraordinary out of the norm that, that aren't like the world. See, the world would have said, wipe out the pots, go down to your local liquor store and go fill those babies up because we need some more wine. But that's not how Jesus works. Jesus says, follow my instructions and I'll show you how to do it. But here's where we have to be. In the place where Mary told him to be. Do whatever he says. See, maybe Jesus has been telling you something to do and you're looking for a result of something in your life but you haven't been listening to him because it makes no sense whatsoever. Well, it makes no sense to your natural mind, but I'm going to tell you what, it makes perfect sense to your spiritual mind, if that makes any sense at all. Your spirit does have a mind, I believe. Your spirit has a, has a knowing. It has a brain, per se. It knows when the Holy Spirit's speaking to us to do it. And maybe there's somebody in here today that God's been telling you to do something, and you've been neglecting to do it. You know, like, step out on the water, come to me, Peter. Now, that's not logical. <laughs> he, he made us swim, but he didn't make us walk on water. But yet Jesus, there's nothing about him that's ordinary. He's extraordinary. He's supernatural. And when he begins to do some extraordinary things in our lives, and then sometime, or even in a church service, then we think, wow, that's freaky. 
No, God's telling me to get out of my, my seat and, and dance around the chairs seven times. Now, that's really weird, Jesus. Because, you know, my friends are here and they'll see me do that. They'll think I'm kooky.